With the election five days away, Jody Wilson-Raybould's new book has hit store shelves. Once a star in the Liberal cabinet, she was Canada's first Indigenous Justice Minister and Attorney General. The book is called Indian in the Cabinet, Speaking Truth to Power. In it, she recounts detailed private conversations with Prime Minister Trudeau in the final days leading up to her resignation. She writes, either the Prime Minister knew everything that happened and did not care and was clearly lying to me in the country, or he did not know. He was either complicit or incompetent. She says at one point she told Trudeau, I wish I'd never met you. The SNC scandal also led to the resignations of Trudeau's top advisor, Jerry Butts, and Privy Council Clerk, Michael Wernick. And the ethics commissioner found Trudeau violated conflict of interest rules by attempting to interfere in the criminal prosecution of SNC-Lavalin. Jody Wilson-Raybould, thanks for speaking with us today. Let me start by asking, why did you write this book? Well, I, I have thought about uh, writing, writing this book about my experiences, not only in federal politics, but Indigenous politics for, for quite some time. And, and I found myself, like, like many and most of us, um, being isolated during COVID and, and found it to be a really uh, good time for self-reflection and, and to write. And, and so that's what I have done in recounting a lot of my experiences um, as an Indigenous politician and, and certainly as a, a member of Parliament and as a minister. There's also a lot of detail about private conversations you had with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. One of the things you write is, he told me I had not experienced what I said I did. I know he wanted me to lie. This man was not the leader I thought him to be. So talk to me about the timing of releasing this is now, just before an election. Is this your moment of revenge? Well, I, 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 it's not my moment of revenge. Um, I don't think of it in that way at all. I'm proud of, of the work that I did and, and the, the book that um, has been released today. I want to and I feel it's important to relay my experiences. I had uh, announced the publication of my book to be in the fall of, of 2021 and, and certainly announced the publication date um, well before um, the election was called by, by Justin Trudeau. So, The timing was set in place before the election call. Well, I mean, there had been a lot of discussions, um, certainly um, among members of Parliament when the House was still setting, or sitting uh, around when uh, the timing of the election call would be, rumours about it being in the fall of 2021 and rumours about it being in, in the spring of, of 2022. Um, you know, I, I feel that, uh, you know, my experiences in government uh, and relaying those experiences and the lessons that I've learned um, are um, important to tell. I wanted to tell them and um, I go into, you know, a lot of detail, um, not only around my interaction with the Prime Minister, but around um, issues uh, that are on uh, in the forefront of my advocacy for, for decades around Indigenous issues, around social justice issues, um, the very nature of our democracy. These are important discussions that I wanted to elevate and will continue to elevate to the, to the forefront. You describe in the book how Justin Trudeau recruited you to politics when you were the AFN regional chief in BC and you say Indigenous leaders almost never cross over into the political world. Why is that? Well, I mean, I think there's a, a lot of um, different reasons for that. I certainly do not want to, based on telling of my experience, uh, it, it dissuade others from entering into um, federal politics or any elected uh, position for that matter. It's important to have um, a diversity of voices around the table. Um, for me, at the time when I was regional chief, I found that um, the issues and advancing rights recognition and improving quality of life for Indigenous Indigenous peoples, um, I needed to enter into other venues, other um, uh, pursue other avenues to, to make change happen, to make the transformative change happen um, that Indigenous leaders have been calling for for a long time. 
And it was at that time we had meetings with former Prime Minister Harper um, that I met um, Justin Trudeau. And um, I have always been taught that if you want something um, to be done, that you get involved. And um, there have been Indigenous um, members of Parliament and Cabinet Ministers before me, um, but I think there needs to be more. And um, Indigenous peoples need to see the value in, in getting involved. Involved. And again, not to be um, you know, dissuaded by my experience, but I believe and I hope that the telling of my experience in this book and, and what I hope to be a hopeful message coming out of it in terms of the importance of having all voices heard in discussions around kitchen tables, cabinet tables in Parliament and across the country is important to take into, into account the diversity of perspectives to address the major issues facing our time. So um, I do not regret um, the time that I've spent in, in federal politics. I'm going to continue to be a, a strong voice on the issues that I care about. What? in your view, was at the heart of the clash between you and Justin Trudeau? Was it that you saw the SNC matter as a legal issue and he saw it as more of a political one that needed to be managed? Well, I, I, I mean, for me, and you'd have to ask um, him the same question so he could reflect on, on his views, but for me, I, I mean, I am a proud Indigenous person in this country and I have a very different world view when it comes to addressing um, he, issues and how we function most productively in a balanced way in society and and that means ensuring that all voices are heard and when I entered into to federal politics obviously I was familiar with politics and, and politicians having been the regional chief but in indigenous politics there are no political parties as I talk about in the book and um, the nature of political parties and how deeply entrenched political parties and partisanship is in our um, parliament and in our democracy uh, is very different from the worldview that I hold in terms of uh, working together, trying to achieve balance, working towards consensus-based decision-making. I mean, some might say that I um, am naive in, in talking about this, but I truly believe um, that we can, and this is an overused line, do politics differently, where every voice matters and everybody can contribute to discussions. Um, I had not realized until being in um, the center of um, perceived power in government as a cabinet minister, how deeply entrenched partisanship is, how decisions are made, not all of them, and, and I don't get me wrong, I believe that there has been good work done, but how deeply entrenched um, partisanship is, making decisions based on what polls say, making decisions based on political expediency versus what is the best solution um, on particular issues that can be put in place to stand the test of time. The hyper nature of partisanship and the blind loyalty that I experienced um, is, is um, corrosive to meaningful discussions and to the very nature of our democracy, which I believe um, should be embracing good ideas, views and solutions, no matter where they come from, simply because um, an idea comes from someone that is not in the political party that you're in doesn't make it um, a bad idea. Um, it's just a different idea and we need to have vigorous debate and discussions about these ideas. And, um, you know, when I was so fortunate to have been elected as an independent member of parliament for this amazing riding of Vancouver Granville, which you can see behind me, um, that is um, how I wanted and and I operated in terms of reaching across party lines to find those solutions that are important to address um, the major issues of our time, like climate change, like recognizing indigenous rights and um, the very nature of our parliamentary democracy. Well, yeah, you do write that you've come to realize there is illusion, an illusion about how we govern no matter who is in power. This is a quote from your book, Par party over idea, leaders over parliamentarians, secrecy over transparency, self-interest over the collective good. 
it's a pretty damning indictment of the whole system. Well, I mean, I, th I mean, this is one of the reasons why I felt um, it was important for me to speak about my experiences as being an Indigenous person who found herself um, in the position of Minister of Justice and Attorney General around a cabinet table um, in a government that um, uh, espoused uh, the strong belief early on, um, the Prime Minister, in terms of uh, we are going to be a government by cabinet, that we are open by default, um, releasing openness and transparency in terms of our ways of operating as a government. Um, the reality is, and I came to learn this um, um, increasingly so over time, is that not, that's not necessarily how um, government operates and I provide insights by detailing the realities that I was confronted with in terms of trying to advance the mandate letter, the issues, the policy and legal changes um, that I was tasked with and how I was confronted with other views, not necessarily views that solve the issue, but views that reflect um, partisanship or that um, an issue is too difficult to tackle because we will get criticism or we will lose votes because of it. I don't think in, in that way and um, it became a challenge uh, for me and you know we're in a federal election that's coming up soon and I um, seeing the nature of the discussions and how it's so polarized and the wedge issues that are being brought up um, as opposed to having really meaningful discussions about um, the issues that I know and hear are important to people in Vancouver, Granville and across the country. It's problematic and um, you know I'm will continue you know, through this book and the themes in the book um, continue to have those conversations and raise those issues. Given all that, what message do you think your story in federal politics sends to women, especially Indigenous women, about their future role as leaders in politics? Well, I, uh, I, um, I'm hopeful and, and I remain hopeful and I'm not, um, um, even though I have some mixed emotions and reflections on my experience in federal politics and um, one of those is that I'm sad and that sadness comes from the lost opportunity um, to um, do what we said we were going to do uh, when we came, when this government came into power in 2015. I believe that when you make promises and you put forward um, platforms and you're elected on those platforms that you should fulfill them. Um, what does it say? It, um, I speak about my experience and I speak about my experience in my workplace and the reality that I have faced discrimination, I faced racism around the cabinet table, marginalization of my voice, even though I um, have lived experience and expertise in particular subject areas. Um, I know that this is an experience that many women and individuals have in their work lives, and it highlights for me, how much we still have to do to ensure that all voices are heard, to eliminate systemic problems and discrimination, implicit or otherwise bias, uh, in our systems of, of government. And um, all that to say, and certainly I don't want to not encourage people to put their names forward, there's a lot of Indigenous people that have put their names forward in this election, um, but I'm hopeful that by speaking out about my experience and doing it in a way that is um, uh, positive and providing solutions, which I have, um, to look at how we engage in political discussions, how our um, you know, parliamentary democracy is unfolding and the, the negative influence of, of hyper-partisanship in political parties, how that um, negates uh, real discussions on issues. 
um, that's problematic. But I, I would say to any uh, young Indigenous person, young or old, any Canadian, that your voice matters. And to get involved in politics and, and by retelling my story, I hope that you know people can learn some of the lessons that I've learned and know that we've come a long way as a, as a country, but we still have a long way to go to ensure that we're not just saying we have um, diversity, for example, within our political party, but um, and that's good, all the political parties have a lot of diversity within them, but we actually have to um, act on that diversity and listen to those diverse voices. My experience in government and in a political party um, did not necessarily present that um, that, uh, that listening and the idea that um, by having um, people with different lived experiences contributing to the public policy discussions um, was something that was positive. Um, so we need to change that. And I'm gonna continue to speak out and, and I'm hopeful um, that people will continue to put their names forward. I was the first Indigenous Minister of Justice and Attorney General in Canada. I'm incredibly proud of that and proud of the work we were able to accomplish. Um, but I know that I'm not going to be the last Indigenous Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Um, so um, I'm going to continue to exercise my voice and I hope other people do as well. Justin Trudeau denies that he asked you to lie, denies he directed you on the SNC file and considers all of this old news. Do you think the case is closed? Do I think the, the, this issue is closed? Is that the, what you said? The, yeah, the SNC, the whole, all the questions about SNC, well, have they been answered? Yeah, I, well, I mean, I, I recount this in, in, in the book, and um, SNC was a significant part of my experience in federal um, politics and in government, and, and I recount in, in very, in a very detailed way, my experience, what was said, how I felt, and beyond that, um, you know, the public record reflects an enormous amount of discussion and evidence on on that issue of SNC. And I, um, in retelling that, it's contextualized within the context of the entirety of, of the book and, and my experience. And I think, um, for me, I have relayed. Um, what I have to say on that matter, um, but I have been consistent in what I've said um, right now um, and two years ago, and the Ethics Commissioner reflected this in his report. There are um, witnesses that he would have interviewed, and, and we can focus on, on this matter, and I know media has, um, but for me, um, from my perspective, I've reflected all that I was privy to uh, um, for the most part in terms of, of this matter. I know you said you, you still believe in the political process. Can I ask, are you going to vote in this election? I, uh, well, I've already voted. I, I got back from, from Ottawa yesterday and I went straight to my advance poll because it would be the only time that I could vote before the election. And um, I, I did vote and I have to say, being the first um, member of parliament for the riding of Vancouver Granville, which was created uh, in 2015. I have to say I had um, um, you know, some tugs at my heartstring when I um, put an X, which for me signified um, um, the close of, of my being, and I've been incredibly proud to be the member of parliament for Vancouver Granville. And, um, to the next uh, member of parliament for this amazing writing. I wish them the best of luck as I do for, for anybody that puts their name forward and for everybody that um, is so fortunate enough to represent um, constituents uh, in the House of Commons. Do you still consider yourself a liberal and are, are you willing to tell us how you voted? No, I'm not going to tell how I voted, but um, you know, I had never been a member of a political party in, in my entire life. That's not part of the way I think about the world in terms of compartmentalizing individuals, in terms of labels. But I mean, I joined um, the Liberal Party um, because I shared um, values um, that um, the Liberal Party espouses. I mean, I was raised to believe 
um, in equality and inclusion and justice. I still believe those things. Um, the Liberal Party under Justin Trudeau is certainly not something that I um, uh, understand or align with, but for me, I'm the same person with the same hopefulness that I had um, back in 2014 when I decided to get involved in federal politics. I'm the same person now, um, have learned a lot of lessons and um, who knows what the, the future holds, but I'm going to continue to do as I had for decades before I entered federal politics, continue to, to advocate for um, Indigenous rights, the recognition of those rights, um, uh, climate change, and really fundamentally being very conscious and raising issues around the nature of our democracy and um, the concerning reality that we're seeing right now about democracy, about politics, about the polarization that we're starting to see. Um, we need to be constantly vigilant about um, about who we are, how we make decisions, and how we pit one another against each other. That's not part of my worldview. Um, I have been taught that everybody in the community plays a role, and when you're inhibited from playing that role to the best of your ability, the community suffers. And um, I think that, uh, well, I don't think I know that there's a lot that mainstream federal politics or mainstream politics generally can learn from um, indigenous worldviews, indigenous laws and perspectives, much like um, they can learn from from other perspectives. Um, I know that the status quo is, is deeply entrenched um, and we have to ensure we do everything that we can to, to move beyond that, to find, and this is an overused line, a better way of doing politics because I truly believe that we can. The voters of Vancouver Granville showed me that we can by um, electing the first ever female independent member of parliament in our country's history. So I'm optimistic and I hope that my experience, and it was painful um, at times, uh, it was emotional, certainly it was joyful, um, and I, through writing this book, you know, did as they say, um, I went on a bit of a, it was a healing process for me, but I, um, I come out of it and I sit here talking to you um, as somebody that is going to continue to be involved um, um, in public service and um, I look forward to, to figuring out what that best, the best place is for me um, to continue the work that I've done my life, my entire life. Okay, Jody Wilson-Raybould, thank you. Thanks for having me.